Hello YouTube friends, Ashley Murphy here with Crazy Brave Homeschool. For those of you who are new here, I am a new homeschooling mom of a first grader and a little pre k -er. I wanted to make this video to show you what my first grader has been up to. Um, I know that I just did a mid-year curriculum kind of check-in sort of review, what was working and what we dropped. But I think what can be really nice for especially new homeschoolers um, is to see like up close and personal what other homeschool kids are working on. Like, sure, we're doing geography or language arts or science, but like, what does that look like for a first grader? Um, and how is it going? And what is really like holding their interest? And like, what kinds of resources are these homeschool families using for say math or phonics? Um, so I think that it can go a little bit deeper than just this is the curric the, this is the curriculum that we're using and it's either working or it's not. Um, so I wanted to actually show you like some of that consumable work um, that we've been doing, just because I know that I eat those kinds of videos up. I love seeing like a day in the life. I love seeing like what exactly is the science or geography? What does that even look like for a six year old? That I thought that this may be helpful for some of those new homeschooling families just like us. Okay, so let's do it. So I thought first I would just kind of show you guys um, how I keep track of the work that like like the some of the loose paperwork that we're doing or little projects. Um, we are not like a workbook heavy family and even most of our curriculum doesn't have a ton of paperwork. Um, a lot of it's really hands-on or game-based, but I do like to hold on to some of the stuff, like the extra little fun things that we do. Um, sometimes we take a little break from our curriculum, and uh, this is basically what that is. Like, this has a lot of the sample, that's summer, but this has a lot of, like, the sample work that I will show our charter school. So I have it organized all into weeks. And then every week, okay, so I used to do this, which seems crazy because I don't have the time for this anymore. But I used to take photos of everything we would do and then make a little, <laughs> I don't have time for that anymore. Um, Right, but I thought this would be nice to do just a quick little flip through of a few of the weeks to kind of show you. This is what we were doing in the beginning of our year, um, aside from our normal curriculum. Um, some art and some math. And then like, you know, learning, learning names. You know, learning to write her name. That was early on in the year. Um, but that's like it for week one, right? And then we had like our other normal curriculum. Poppy's Restaurant, which is really cute. Um, a little bit of science, and then that's it. So really not much, but I'm really just wanting to hold on to a few samples of something every week, you know, to save for, you know, this is really like a keepsake book in a way too. Okay, so a lot of art, and then we did this little study on Spain on week five. You know, and I'll pull from our workbooks once in a while if I feel like, you know, this week, let's just like take a break from normal curriculum and do some money recognition or let's learn how to write out our days of the week. So, yeah, it's a lot of that. But this is, yeah, this seemed like th this is first grade work. I would have loved to have seen something like this when we were starting out our school year. This is when we studied minerals. You know, I, this is what I found on her desk when she was just messing around. This wasn't a part of a school day, but this was early on, like early on edition. This is week eight. So then if we get into like week 19 here, you know, I can see, oh, wow, like her math really has improved. So we're doing three letter subtraction, um, this little mini book report, you know, starting to... This was a mystery science uh, little assignment for a fossil dig. Pretty cute. This 
was a survival uh, salmon survival board game from our history curriculum uh, from our American Girl history curriculum and that's like all I put in here for one week you know and then yeah and here we are week 23 so we, it took us a while to finally start using like a morning menu. Uh, and I don't really know why. I kind of just felt like my kids wouldn't like something that was sort of um, redundant. But I got to say, this has actually been a really great start to um, our homeschool mornings. I would say we don't use it every morning, but probably about four mornings a week. And I haven't cleaned this, but um, I do really like this for the calendar work little bit of place value what is the weather and the season and then uh, every week I'll switch out the pages to like a new letter and a new shape um, and maybe like a new math problem just to kind of get the you know the brain warmed up a bit the wheels turning this um, morning menu specifically is from the gentle classical press and it comes with like over a hundred pages. So there's a lot to choose from. It's been great for my first grader and great for my preschooler. And I will mention here early on in the video, my first grader is a young first grader. She turned six in July. Um, so we sort of went back and forth between maybe putting her in kindergarten or first grade. Um, so we are definitely a little behind with our reading, which feels totally fine for our family. Um, but yeah, so the phonics and stuff that you see here um, is definitely geared more towards some of that classic kindergarten curriculum. So getting into language arts and phonics, I've talked about this program a lot in my videos, Delightful Reading with Simply Charlotte Mason. Um, so this is just playing with letters and sounds, and it's a ton of games. It's a lot of bingo, I spy, um, go fish, lots of games to learn all of those letters and letter sounds. We also start most of our mornings off with an alphabet um, chant, and um, this has been a, a great exercise for repetition. Here are a few examples of um, some of those games that we've been playing with the letters. We started this at the beginning of the school year in August, and um, my daughter is definitely close to knowing all of the sounds, but I am really just trying to master this before moving on to Delightful Reading Level 2. I was planning on starting that a couple weeks ago, but I just thought, you know, I think we just need to stick with this a little while longer. I really want to build her confidence. And that is what feels right to us. So for language arts, I've talked a lot about Blossom and Root. Um, I also really, I'm very excited to do a formal review of Blossom and Root uh, pretty soon here. But this is their language arts. This is the student notebook. So like, you know, just like kind of getting into the, that consumable work that first graders are doing. I thought this would be a good example of some of the stuff that we do. So this uh, language arts is really heavy on um, narration and copy work. So most of the time I will write for my daughter um, the narration of the stories that she's read. And sometimes I will have her write um, a little bit. But, you know, with the narration, it's, you know, they're just like talking a million miles a minute and she is still learning her letters. So it makes the most sense for me to do all of the writing. And then there is some copy work in here. Um, we stopped doing this copy work because it really just felt like these lines are very small. She was really having a hard time understanding that she should be writing um, larger letters. And she was just really fighting this. So we have mostly just stuck with this program for the narration and the journal prompts. And then halfway through the year, which we just started a couple weeks ago, has been their geography program. So this started with an introduction to, let's see, an introduction to like what is a map and compass work, symbols in the map key. So this has been a really great like gentle introduction to map work, following directions. And then we're getting into like maps of countries and talking about borders and city capitals. 
And then we're getting into land forms and bodies of water. I have found a great geography song and continent song that I will definitely link in this video. We've been loving it and starting out our mornings with it every, um, every day. And so here we're getting into continents. Yeah, and then um, what's cool is that they are pairing the geography unit with um, some folk tales from uh, around the world. So we just did folk tales, like Latin America folk tales, and then now we're getting into Scotland, and then I believe we're going to be hitting like India and Vietnam. So then we're going to be doing more of these like country studies. So. This is great. Um, we've really been enjoying this. And um, I realized that we are actually gonna finish this curriculum way early. We're gonna finish in April. And that's probably because I did not take a break for uh, Christmas. Um, it's our first year. So I really just kind of felt like we should get into a nice groove with our routine. So for handwriting, we had been using Simply Charlotte Mason up until a couple of weeks ago. But it was so boring and so dry and it was just, you know, my daughter really was not into it. So I thought getting her a handwriting workbook for girls would be right up her alley because she actually really likes writing when it's stuff that she wants to write about. She's constantly writing in her journals and she'll ask me, Mom, how do I write I have a secret? Um, or, you know, my friend and I had a fight or I don't know. So she really likes writing and she's eager to write, but she wants to write stuff that she is interested in. Uh, so I thought this was cute. You know, you write words like ticklish and giggling laughter. And I like that the lines are a good size for her. She doesn't like them when they're too big. Obviously too small is not good for her yet. So I thought that these lines are pretty good. Mermaid, seashells, sparkly, glitter. Um, yeah, this is this is fun for her. So we just started this one. It's going pretty well. I'm going to try to get her to do a page um, a couple days a week. I did also get the whole Lily Learning Pack that has handwriting practice, cursive, and then like actually like pictures you can learn to draw. And it comes with this pen that erases after you use it. What's cool is that all the letters are indented, so you, it's a really good practice for writing the letters exactly how they should be written. Um, I thought my son would like it, my little four-year-old, but he hates that the pen disappears, so he likes actual worksheets if he's going to do this. Uh, my daughter thinks it's kind of cool, but uh, I don't know. I guess I haven't pulled it out enough because I guess I'm a little annoyed that the pen erases too. <laughs> Why does that bother me? Because like, I want to see the work, which is so like schoolish of me. Um, but it's great. It's great. It's great practice. And we really should be pulling this out more often. Okay. So for math, uh, we have been using two curriculums. I have simply Charlotte Mason. Uh, I don't have the teacher's guide. This is just a student workbook. Um, the simply Charlotte Mason is a very gentle, well, Actually, I don't even know if I would say gentle because it is challenging, but it's considered a first grade math program for arithmetic and it basically explores numbers one through 100 and eventually, you know, you're getting into simple sums um, with addition and subtraction, skip counting, bundling, uh, like bundles and units, um, but it can be a little redundant. So we are also using Right Start Mathematics. The workbook that comes with Simply Charlotte Mason is just grid paper, and then um, they'll have you know the student do a little bit of simple sums in their workbook, and then they number, you know, each week we do a, a new number, and you know the grids are just helping them with place value. So we are on number twenty three. Um, and we're technically, I think, halfway through the book. So I think that we are on track. I think that once you start getting into the 30s, the program changes a bit. It's not like um, these real, like, specific questions. What's 23 minus 6 or whatever? 
but a lot of them are word problems. And I do like that about this program. Word problems are challenging and this curriculum is all word problems. So it's been a really great introduction into that for her. It's definitely not a lot of like worksheet heavy work as you can see. All of it is done using manipulatives. So I got this board um, and these really cute balls from Treasures from Jennifer. And we use this to do a lot of those simple sum word problems with Charlotte Mason. I also made this number chart on Canva um, because sometimes, you know, using the manipulatives is great, but um, I wanted her to also, you know, start understanding how to add and subtract with just looking at numbers instead of using her hands to constantly count stuff out. This is much faster. Um, and I think that she is ready for this. We've been doing a ton of hands-on addition and subtraction. So um, I'm, I'm, I've been really happy to see how this has been going. It's definitely faster. Um, so then the right start though is great. This is, I think, technically their kindergarten curriculum, although I don't really know if, if they would agree with that. Um, but it seems more so directed towards like that, that kindergarten classic math curriculum. So it is a lot of um, games and it's a lot of abacus work. We have really been loving this. This, is, this has been great. We use the abacus all the time. Um, it's a lot of like place value cards and then lots of shapes. Uh, it comes with a geo board with the rubber bands and all that. Um, it, it comes with a ton of hands-on math, it, lots of manipulatives. So that has been great. I'm really loving both programs because they're super different. So I feel like she's getting a lot of different um, math concepts introduced to her. This workbook, as you can see, is very small. I also really appreciate this. It is more hands-on than it is workbook heavy. We are, I think we're a third of the way through this program because I started it later. And well, we skipped all this because this was just way too review. She already knew all that. But there's just, you know, we've only done a little bit, I think four worksheets and we're almost, you know, a third of the way through. So it's really not workbook heavy at all, which I love. Uh, a couple other resources we use for math all the time are these digi blocks. Um, so if you guys haven't seen these, these are pretty great. They um, see if I can get this open with one hand. They come with these little units, these little blocks in here, and each bundle has ten. So this has been a great way to introduce bundles and units. Um, we use these with our Charlotte Mason uh, problems quite often. And then we use our number chart. So I printed this off, I think it was $4 from The Beauty of Play. She also has incredible math curriculums and resources. I'm really excited to explore her curriculum next year for my son and possibly for my rising second grader. Um, so the hundreds chart, I love that it's rainbow. It's very pretty. Anything rainbow for math? Yes. <laughs> So for science, I've talked a lot about Blossom and Root not working out for us for science. Um, I also did not like their nature study. So every week I put together uh, our own little like nature study science unit, typically using mystery science. And then I just use the resources that we have. This year we've studied a lot about animals, um, ocean life, um, a little bit of weather and uh, like rocks and gems, uh, you know, uh, yeah, some of that. So I do use the student notebook that came with the nature study from Blossom and Root that we're not using. And I have her draw, you know, just like a, like a science sort of narration, uh, comprehension about whatever it was. So sometimes these drawings are very simple so she can just get done with it. Um, but like this is owls. And then I have her tell me a little bit about what she learned from, from that. So this has been... I think this has been uh, going great. It's a little frustrating to put together all of my own science units every week. I look forward to not doing this again next year, but it is working. Okay, and then lastly, history. I have once again saved this for the last. I just did a little video on what we're doing for our history right now. I'm obsessed with it. It's like the best thing that we've done in our homeschool so far. Um, so I found this American Girl history from Little School of Smiths. 
uh, I'm going to do a proper review of this curriculum, but I kind of wanted to get through one or two more months of using it. We just finished month one with Kaya, so we learned a lot about the Nez Perce tribe in the Pacific Northwest and all about growing up Native American. Now, my daughter is very fascinated with uh, Native Americans, so I'm hoping that the rest of this curriculum goes over well. Next up is Felicity, and we'll be learning about Colonial America. So um, this, uh, it's just awesome. I love this curriculum so much. So you got to find all the books, though, for each character. Our library, our, the county library system, I was able to reserve um, all of the books for Kaya. I don't, that felt lucky to me. I don't know if every library is going to have these, but ours does. So thank you. Um, my daughter has been eating these up. We read one book a month. No, I'm sorry. That's not right. We read one book a week. And typically we actually finish one of these in three days because my daughter loves them so much. We're not even supposed to be reading past book three or four. And we are on book six um, because she just loves all of these stories about Kaya. So that's been a, just hugely positive for our homeschool. We have typically not read that much before. And... Um, you know, I'm just, I'm really happy about that. I got this history timeline notebook from School Nest on Amazon, and uh, we haven't filled out much, but um, let's see if we did any. Obviously, we are way later. Here we go. So we, you know, Nez Perce Tribe in the Pacific Northwest Territory. And then this last week, we just did uh, Lewis and Clark. So let's see. That was the Lewis and Clark Expedition, 1804. Um, you would think that things like the Lewis and Clark Expedition might be boring. Obviously, to history buffs, that's not boring. To me, in public school, I hated, I hated history. This curriculum makes history so much fun. Um, I won't do a complete flip through here, but every week is just really cool. I mean, it's a lot of reading and, um, you use a narration notebook, but there's always like some really fun, um, treat or game. So we did TP snacks on the first week. Um, there is, it was a really fun game, literally only involved a pencil and a mason jar lid and a piece of string. And my kids played with it all day. They, they still love it. Um, we made these like Nez Perce, um, pouches, parfleches. I don't know how to say that word. Um, just the other, oh my God, my daughter's been obsessed with weaving these baskets. It's really simple and she's made a ton of them. She's never done any kind of handiwork like that before. Um, that was a misprint. And then the Lewis and Clark week, you know, I was really worried we were going to get bored, but I found a pretty great book at the library. We read about the whole expedition. I skipped over some parts. Um, and then this was the best part. We made an expedition cookie. Where's my picture? So you make, here's the recipe. You make out the cookie, you trace it, you bake it. And then you put the trail, you know, the route that Lewis and Clark took. And then the chocolate chips represent the mountains that the Nez Perce tribes, um, Nez Perce tribe lived on and occupied. So cool. I loved this unit. I really hope that Felicity is just as fun. It looks really good. So this is the narration notebook. I just uh, grabbed a sketchbook and let her kind of decorate the front. And then, um, you know, each page is kind of different. Some of it is like, so what do I know about Nez Perce Native Americans? And then this was some map work uh, with the, the mountains and the rivers that they lived around and fished on. Um, I always do coloring pages, so I threw those in there. And these were some fun Native American stamps that I got from a thrift store. And then uh, learning about Appaloosa horses and the salmon life cycle. So then I had her do like a little character profile on Kaya and write down a few things about her. 
This was my favorite part of the Lewis and Clark expedition when Lewis and Clark fought the grizzly bears. My favorite Kaya book, little cover of the book. And that's as far as we've come with that. So definitely by far my favorite thing we're doing. And that's because she enjoys it so much, right? Tends to be a lot easier to homeschool when they really like what they're learning about. So I'm very grateful to this company, Little School of Smiths. And then I wanted to um, just kind of show you guys what we have planned for the near future. So when our language arts curriculum is finished, we are going to take a break from a language arts curriculum and do Beautiful Mundo, which is a an introduction to Spanish program. So this is what the cover looks like. I haven't had it bound yet. I need to take it to my printer and have it bound. Um, so that's the teacher's guide, um, a pretty fat workbook, and then there's a whole nother narration notebook that goes with this as well that I need to print. But then it only, so it requires you to buy a few books, and then there's a Latin history, Latino history. Um, this is a book of Spanish um, songs. And then there is a massive book recommendation list that we're going to have to see if our library has. Um, on to Felicity next with this. I'm so excited. And then the other curriculum that we'll be starting um, pretty soon. So again, when our language arts is all done in April, because um, we're doing all that geography right now, I bought this premature. I, I didn't realize how much geography we were going to be doing. So I have not started this yet. I think we actually did one or two lessons. And then I realized it's just not necessary. It's it's way too much stuff. So I'm really excited to start Beautiful Feet, US Geography, K through three um, in April. Okay, so what do you guys think? Was that kind of nice to see like some examples of what a first grader is up to in the middle of her school year? If you liked this video, please follow along for what I hope to be many, many, many years of our homeschooling journey. Okay, thanks guys. Have a great weekend.